So we're going to welcome uh, Jonas Beansizler and uh, Raphael Majid up. And let me get that open. They're going to be talking to us about the um, National Emergency Department Registry in Germany. Let's go ahead and present. Yes. Thank you much, uh, very much for the um, kind introduction. Um, we are very thrilled to be here, actually, because when I uh, read the program, I was not too, not very sure if we're a good fit for the program, but from being here and listening to the um, discussion of the past uh, uh, two days or today and yesterday, I feel like uh, we're an excellent use case um, with uh, what we are doing and how we are um, trying to um, open data silos, even though we're doing it uh, in Germany. And um, I'm here with Raphael, and uh, in the German National Emergency Department Registry, we are both in charge of the technical processes where I'm coordinating all the organizational processes, and uh, Raphael is dealing with the um, software uh, design and the software development. And um, I think it's a brilliant uh, use case for showing um, how to access uh, data silos. And our approach is that we try to be, or that we are really deeply rooted in the emergency care and intensive care community in Germany. And also that we try to always provide um, um, value for the participating um, emergency departments. Um, First of all, don't be fooled by the name. Um, the name of our registry is typically Actin Registry. Actin is the Alliance for Communication and um, Intensive Care and Emergency Medicine in Germany. And um, we are uh, operating the Actin Registry, the German National Registry um, for the uh, emergency departments. But we are rather uh, federated and um, distributed infrastructure. And with the infrastructure, we give access to primary clinical data from patient care within emergency departments. And of course, we're using electronic uh, health records. So we don't want to burden um, emergency departments with uh, additional documentation. We just want to use the data that is already being collected. So we're using routing uh, records only. And we want to use this data for healthcare research, surveillance, internal quality management, and external quality management. Of course, it's very challenging to work with emergency departments because in emergency departments, you have a high number of cases, it's a high stress environment, and uh, uh, most importantly, we cannot collect and consent in the emergency department. So that's why we have a concept of federated and uh, distributed architecture. And um, why are we here, of course? It's because uh, the backbone of our infrastructure is a data warehouse that is based on um, I2B2. As the title of the talk already said, has been quite a long path, and we are deeply rooted in the um, in the emergency medicine and um, in the intensive care community in Germany. So the alliance for uh, uh, the project was founded in 2007, and what sets us apart from other endeavors is that the semantics, so the data set that we are uh, collecting, was actually created before we even started working on the registry or on the research infrastructure. So that was in 2010, and that was from the um, Professional Association of Intensive Care and uh, Emergency Medicine in Germany. So we are very closely linked to it. And uh, we released uh, the first data set emergency department back in 2010. It used to be really a paper record. And that is to still to this day the uh, record that we are um, mainly, or it's the core module that we are um, collecting in our infrastructure. And uh, the whole infrastructure was actually created during 2013 and 2019 in a research project. And um, in that time, we uh, uh, defined the syntactic. So the data we are using is actually based on uh, HL7 CDA messages that we directly source from the emergency department information systems in which they are collected. And also, and Raphael will tell you a little more about it, we uh, developed the uh, technology behind it. So the Actin data warehouse in which we collect the data, and of course, also the um, Actin broker, which is our middleware with which we can actually um, access the data if we want to. And uh, very excitingly, uh, since 2020, we are part of the network University Medicine in Germany, which was created during um, the COVID uh, pandemic, so that we have now uh, continuous funding to actually uh, conduct our infrastructure. And since 2022, we are actually a nonprofit organization that is operating um, the emergency department uh, registry. And um, to give you an idea of what we are doing and uh, 
uh, how we are um, actually uh, operating. At the moment, we have uh, 63 active, uh, Actin data warehouse systems that are um, online. So these are the productive uh, systems. So we basically have uh, 63 um, I2B2 instances running in um, emergency departments in Germany. You can see it's, we have quite the good coverage of all of Germany at the moment, so that we uh, account for like roughly um, 1.5 million cases we had in the infrastructure in 2023. Uh, we are a little less than uh, 7 million cases that we have in the um, whole infrastructure since 2017. Actually, I think we have data back until 2014 even. And um, um, we cover roughly anywhere between um, five to 10% of the emergency department cases in all of Germany. It's, it's a rough estimate, but it should be anywhere uh, in between. And as you can see, uh, ever since 2020, when we joined the, um, uh, uh, the Network University Medicine, we got funding to connect uh, new nodes to the uh, registry. So we've been growing quite, quite a lot in the last uh, three years. And we want to be anywhere around 100 systems to be productive uh, by the end of next year. So it's going to be interesting if we can do it or not, but we'll see. Anyways, so this is the general um, architecture of the infrastructure. So um, we have a middleware, that's the Actin broker, as I said, and we have the contributing uh, nodes that export the data that we use in the registry into the uh, I2B2-based Actin data warehouse via an um, HS7 um, CDA interface. And uh, the way it works in our registry is that um, if somebody wants to access the data, we have a data use and access committee and uh, researchers can um, propose a request. And if our committee uh, accepts it, um, we at the Actin IT, so that is um, our work group, translates it to a syntax that we then distribute uh, to the data warehouses. Uh, the query broker is um, agnostic to different data formats, however, um, we are using mainly R scripts and SQL queries to actually query the data. In the registry, it's uh, not a concept like uh, you have, for example, in Shrine, where you just automatically uh, collect the data that is federately uh, um, collected. But what we have is we actually have a, a federated data access authorization um, process. So what happens is that uh, in the I2B2-based data warehouses, um, there's actually a web interface uh, where the um, um, owners of the data warehouse can interact with our queries. So they can review the queries and then they can decide if they wanna actually participate in it. That is because uh, the queries that we send out to the different nodes are usually de-identified or we're asking for de-identified data. However, there's very uh, uh, different opinions among the different data owners what the identified data is and what data they want to contribute. And of course, we also are in a situation because we, are, uh, uh, we have so many instances at, uh, across Germany that it can also happen that we have multiple instances in one town. So it might also be that uh, some emergency departments don't want to share data because they are fearing that uh, a competitor might uh, uh, take valued information out of uh, the query. So that's why we have a process in which we ask before every uh, individual query if it's uh, okay for the emergency departments to share the data. And they can review the query and they can see what kind of data we're asking for. They can even uh, look at the results that are being calculated. And then after that, uh, the results, if uh, aggregated uh, with our middleware and then analyzed in our trusted research environment, it's behind the uh, um, screenshot, but I think um, you get the idea. So we analyze the data in a trusted environment. Okay. Yeah, a quick note uh, again to, to the users of ITP2. Um, so this whole process is only necessary if you want to access data across all the 60 uh, emergency departments. So, But each um, hospital can, of course, use their own I2B2 for whatever reason they want. So they have an I2B2 installation. They have local I2B2 users, and there's no, no nothing involved with us or them to just use their I2B2 as they want. Um, a quick note on, on how the, the data gets into the data warehouse. So um, the hospital... Uh, staff enters their data in their regular hospital information system, so we have no data entry forms whatsoever. Um, each hospital has, or there are 
multiple different software systems in, in Germany. I think it's about seven or eight. Uh, nine. Not nine, um, but some are also custom solutions. So there, there's um, lots of different uh, software for emergency departments. Um, and we don't change anything um, with that. So each hospital just keeps their own hospital information system. Um, it's stored in their um, uh, database, in the uh, um, custom database. So we don't, don't change, change anything with that either. Uh, but we require that um, from the hospital information system, we will get a CDA, an HL7 CDA, that's an XML uh, document, um, transmitted to um, our data warehouse server. Um, so there's the, the part shown above is the system which is already present in the hospital. And then in, in each hospital, there will be a second server installed, in a virtual, usually a virtual server, um, on which uh, the I2B2 installation is run. Um, and also our additional software package uh, and, and interface. And the CDA from the hospital information system is then sent to the server, uh, and we will then pass that, and if successful, put it into the data warehouse in the HB2, and if not, there will be f is feedback to the um, hospital information system so they know something went wrong, maybe some, some uh, syntax was not valid. Um, um, and uh, because there's uh, some kinds of translations involved and there might be um, errors in because we, we don't configure the hospital information system, we just receive the CDAs uh, from our point of view. Um, and to make sure that the data which is entered is exactly what we expect later on the queries, we have an end-to-end -end validation, which is another topic which we don't cover right now, but you can ask um, uh, later if you want um, to make sure that if some, something is entered, we can be sure that it's the same as uh, what we expect in the I2B2 data warehouse. So how do we deploy this? Um, um, it's uh, important to note that um, we have no control over the, um, the IT in the individual hospitals or emergency departments. We have a very small team, so most of the uh, time there was only two IT uh, person uh, working on the development and deployment and everything of this whole network. So we uh, required a very efficient and, and um, um, with, with not, not much maintaining from our side um, to deploy the software. So uh, we have our code in, in uh, Git repositories, um, like usually, um, and um, have our own software with the interface to receive the CDA documents and the user interface, and, uh, and also in Java, and bundle this as EAR, similar to the um, deployment of, of I2B2, but package all this, this uh, our software and the I2B2 software into um, uh, Debian packages, um, and then, um, and put that in an Ubuntu repository. So each hospital um, can install their own server. The hospital IT installs the server, we don't do anything with that. Um, and this is very easy for them just to do a few clicks and uh, not, not much to do from their side and the server is running on, on, on their hospital. Um, and um, so we just provide the repository and uh, some, some instructions manual and the hospital does installation all themselves. Um, and for the installation, we use the official um, I2B2 release binaries, so we don't compile anything, we just uh, take the I2B2 binaries um, and um, add our own configurations to that. Um, so as mentioned, we, we tried to use as much um, from the I2B2 um, official um, functionality as possible. So we started 10 years ago, and there were um, um, no um, import functionality, um, and uh, but we used uh, the, the I2B2 authentication also for the login to our uh, um, front end, where, where the um, users can can um, decide whether to participate or not in, in certain queries. Uh, so there's only user management is all, all done with I2B2 locally. We have added our own um, endpoint to receive the, the CDA documents. Um, use the data model from, from I2B2 and also the database from I2B2, and for the local um, exploration of data, also the I2B2 web client. For the federated architecture to communicate or to, to network, um, um, we didn't use Shrine because this was um, not um, feasible to implement across the, the different um, IT systems and restricted uh, firewall environments, so there was, was no network possible across all the networks, so we had an our custom um, um, middleware called the Actin Query Broker, which is um, asynchronous, so it's, it's not, it doesn't communicate in real time, but uh, it, it supplies uh, a query, and the hospitals pull them the query and answer uh, whenever possible. Um, 
Yeah, and uh, so we, we, but we kept uh, most uh, the functionality from, from our original from Azure B2. Um, additionally, um, the, um, we provide from our user interface um, some quality reporting um, in, in the form of PDF documents. So here's an example uh, where each hospital gets an, a monthly report sent via email, but they can also download it, uh, where they can see uh, specific information. For example, this graph shows uh, the number of patients um, per hour, um, average number of patients per hour uh, in this month. Um, um, uh, on the weekends, which is the, the yellow line and the red line is uh, uh, on the work hours. Uh, this whole report is 20 pages long, this is just in, uh, in quick glimpse, but you can later uh, look at the whole report if you would like. And there's also a, a cross uh, clinic benchmark report which compares um, the current clinic, the, the red on the side is, the, is uh, for example our clinic, to all the other clinics. Um, in this uh, case it's the um, uh, time until triage um, um, at um, the hospital, um, and the, the red line is the 10-minute line, which they need to to be, be below. So, and this is um, a way to compare the, the the clinic with other clinics. Okay, and um, I added this actually um, today as a, a last slide um, for use case. Of course, we do all different kinds of studies with the data that we are collecting, but this is a cooperation with the um, Public Health uh, uh, Institute in Germany, and um, we're doing a public health surveillance with them. And if you want to have a look at it, um, you can look at it. It's, uh, it's updated daily, so you can see, for example, this here is a... Um, is uh, the syndrome of influenza-like illnesses. Um, so you can see um, that we're doing a surveillance that is really done day by day in which you can uh, have a look at what is happening in German emergency departments and how many people are admitted at the moment. And as you can see here, uh, we had little influenza-like illnesses in 2021, 2022. Uh, and in 2023, it was starting again. And uh, this is maybe a great use case of seeing what we're doing with the data. We're also using the data for uh, uh, for studies. So we, we did before and after studies with it. And of course, we also do healthcare research. And um, yeah, and I think with that, we're done. And uh, if anyone has a question, we are happy to answer. Thank you so much. Any questions for uh, Jonas or Raphael? I think that microphone is on, so. Oh, maybe not. Thank you very much, yeah, thank you. As an emergency physician, thank you for doing all this work. Wish we have something like this in the US. Um, and one question I have uh, in terms of your process is uh, you, you said that to propose a project, a research project, from the investigators. Um, is your sort of organization willing to have also uh, sort of non-contributors to data also propose projects? Um, yes, so of course we're always happy for everyone who wants to join, um, but uh, so, so to say, we have the basic infrastructure, and that is we have continuous funding for that. And whenever we try to work on new features, if we want to have new data sets uh, to integrate in the data warehouse, we have different other data sets that are integrated that we didn't talk about. So whenever that happens, we have usually research projects. And then also we have uh, new nodes that join us. So what, for example, happens is that we reach a critical size, and we, of course, also have the um, quality management. So what, for example, some, uh, happened uh, um, um, last year is that we have uh, a hospital company in, in Germany that just approached us because they said if we buy this from our uh, software uh, from our vendors for software uh, then well they want to have a lot of money for that so we would like to join you and uh, usually the bottleneck is uh, that you need to somehow create the interface to really map your database to a HL7 CDA message typically uh, typically you can buy that from the vendor depends on the, the system that you have and that's usually the bottleneck because that costs around somewhere between 20,000 euros plus let's say 5,000 euros per year and uh, so they bought that on their own and joined us and um, if you join our, um, 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 if you join the project usually you join the non-profit organization that we have and that's around about 500 euros that's not a lot for a year um, so then you just join the community and if you participate in it and then you get the benchmarking report. So 
we get a little bit money off from uh, generating the benchmarking reports. But at the moment, we are in the situation where we say yes to everyone. But that might change if we really add new nodes to it. Uh, then we will probably change our policies about it or maybe increase our price. But at the moment, it's working. But we are a very small team. But um, yeah. Maybe you can add uh, to the uh, so so the research questions uh, to be answered across all the hospitals. Um, there's a user access committee, and um, there's no, uh, no. It's not necessary, as far as I understand, that uh, the research question must be proposed by someone from the network. So you could uh, ask a question, a research question, or, or ask for data, um, and the user access committee will, will um, answer. So re really nice work with the um, with the work with the flow of the data going into the CDA, and then the CDA gets transformed into a fire document. Is that a standard fire document, or is that kind of a special fire document? Um, so, yeah. um. So this is um, uh, actually a real-time import uh, incremental update, update. So we receive a, a CDA document for each um, completed um, emergency department case. And this is a, um, a standard CDA document uh, profiled to our specific use case. Um, and the translation to FHIR, it's a, it's a, a conformant FHIR document. It's a FHIR bundle, actually, um, com composed on a, a single patient resource, a single encounter resource and uh, lots of um, observation resources. Basically, we use the, the observation resources to put them into the fact table, and this is how it, how it works. Right, so then you have an engine that takes the fire message and transforms it into a I2B2 import. I, is that available as a, as a open source project? Um, I think it is, um, I mean, it, it should be, <laughs> but I- That would be, a huge contribution. The, the, the limitation is that it's not a, a general fire import, but it's That's just what I was kind of getting at. <laughs> it seems like it's close enough, maybe, that, yeah. Um, and it, when you say it's not general fire format, but it's conformant, it just doesn't do everything a fire document could possibly do. I, I get that, right? That makes a lot of sense. But, um, but I mean, it would, it, it would also serve kind of as a nice skeleton for people who wanted to, like, you know, Add you know their their parts of you know to the to the equation so to speak in a fire document. Very nice, very nice. And maybe a small comment: uh, we're actually now um, updating our data set, and it's planned that we really um, switch from CDA messages to fire bundles completely, and uh, have that also as a possibility so that you can decide either of sending straight away the fire resources or the CDA. We have time for maybe one more question, if there is one. So I don't have a question, I just have a comment. So, you know, we had the, yesterday at the beginning, we had, you know, we were really talking about public health and creating a small network for public health. I wish that that group had heard your presentation, because I mean, this is, this is really, you know, a great example. Um, there's also 63 new I2B2s in Germany that can, we can add to our list. So uh, it, it's actually 70, but those 63 are productive and uh, 70 are at the moment uh, installed. I'm going to call it 70 then. <laughs> but this is great. Thank you very much, and thanks for traveling all this way to make this presentation too. Good to be here. Great. If there's no other questions, let's give a, uh, a round of applause for Jonas and Raphael. Thanks so much.